with the latest edition of Codex Space Marines, we were officially given four successor chapters of the Salamanders. And of those four, the small paragraph of background about them really caught my eye. I'm Pete the Wargamer, and in this video, I'll be showing you how to convert members of the Dragon Spears chapter. I began by removing the components required to build an Assault Intercessor. I chose an Assault Intercessor as I wanted to give this Dragon Spear a converted weapon, and the close combat nature of the Assault Intercessor would make this much easier. However, at the time of filming, the only Assault Intercessors available were easy build kits, which meant my components had push fit tabs protruding from the shoulder joints. I wanted to be able to adjust the pose of the arm, so these needed to be first removed. I began by clipping away the bulk of the tab with my clippers before smoothing out the shoulder joints using my knife. However, a file could have been used here instead. Once I had smoothed out the shoulder joints, I could assemble the two halves of the torso together. With the torso prepped, I was able to start work on the more custom elements of this chapter. As their name has a spear in it, not including a spear on the finished model would have been a complete missed opportunity. The spear I selected was taken from the Age of Sigmar Dark Rider kit. I wanted something that was less clean cut than most Primus equipment, something that looked a little more savage. The barbs and spike studs of the Dark Rider spear was perfect for this. As I had selected to use an Assault Incessor, I already had the perfect arm to attach it to. All I needed to do was to replace the chainsword being held in the left hand. I began the process first by removing the weapons from the arms that currently held them. I started with the spear and, using my knife, I made two cuts, one above and one below the hand. I tried to get as close to the hand as possible with both cuts to ensure that I retained the full length of the spear. With the two halves of the spear removed, I then needed to clean up the cuts. I used a combination of a file and my knife to flatten out the cut, and I needed to ensure that the ends were as flat as possible to allow me to get the best fit later on. Once the spear had been removed from the Dark Rider arm, I needed to do the same to the chainsword. Again, I used my knife to cut above and below the hand. However, this time my focus was on ensuring that I did as little damage to the Space Marine arm as possible. Removing the cross guard was a little trickier because it was attached to the forearm slightly, but two conjoining cuts across the top of the chainsword allowed me to remove the blade with minimal damage. With both parts of the chainsword removed, I just needed to clean up the top and bottom of the hand, again cleaning up any remaining parts of the handle whilst also creating a flat surface. At this stage, I was left with a weaponless left arm and two halves of a spear. I needed to join these separated parts, but regular glue alone just wouldn't cut it. The small surface areas of these contact points would be far too small to glue easily, and when they finally did take, a light breeze would be enough to knock them off. So, to help strengthen that join, I needed to pin the spear. I started by using my pin vise with a 1mm bit to drill a hole straight through the Space Marine's enclosed fist, following the line of the chainsaw's existing handle. I found it easier to alternate drilling from both ends of the hand, to ensure that the entrance and exit points of the hole were exactly where I needed them to be. With the hand drilled, I then began the delicate process of drilling the spear halves. The shafts were very narrow here, and so the tolerances were very low. I had to very carefully ensure that I was dead centre in the spear before I started to drill. I did this slowly to prevent the drill from veering off and going through the sides of the spear. And while this was tricky and quite fiddly, I did only need to drill in a couple of millimetres into the handles. With the holes drilled, I could begin the pin. I used some 1mm steel wire here and as it's the same thickness as the hole, it fits into those holes nicely. I added a bit of glue to the end and pushed it through the hole so that only a few millimetres were left protruding from the top. I gave the glue a chance to dry before bringing in my clippers and cutting the other end of the wire so that both ends of the wire protruded just a couple of millimetres out from the fist. With the wire in place, I tested the fit of each of the spear ends over the top of the wire, just to ensure that I didn't need to remove any more of that wire. Once I was happy that both halves would fit, I then proceeded to superglue the two halves of the spear to the hand. After leaving this to dry, the result was a much stronger bond. The pins would provide better adhesion to the rest of the model, and the spear being quite long, it would mitigate the chance of it being broken off. 
Once the spear had been added to the arm, I was able to glue both arms to the Space Marine's torso. Another aspect of the Dragon Spears is their history of working closely with the Space Wolves, and so, due to the more sentimental nature of the Space Wolves and the Dragon Spears progenitors, it's not too hard to imagine that an exchange of gifts or mementos was made between the members of the two chapters. To represent this on the model, I grabbed myself a component from one of the Space Wolf kits. This particular component had this small runestone and gem hanging from a couple of strips of leather. However, other Space Wolf trinkets could work here too. I cut away the straps from the belt before trimming the contact point. This was then glued to the back of the miniature's belt. I positioned this so that it was swinging outwards, following the momentum of the rest of the model. When the Dragon Spears fought alongside the Space Wolves, their enemy were the Orcs. As such, the Dragon Spears became expert Orc Hunters and gave me another excellent reason to use some more dead animal bits. Again, I wanted to give my Dragon Spears a bit more of a brutal appearance, so impaling a couple of Orc Skulls to some spikes seemed like a good way to go. So I grabbed myself a couple of skulls from the Citadel Skull Set along with an Orc Jawbone. To mount the skulls, I started by drilling two small holes into the top of the power pack, next to each of the two raised cubes. With this drilled, I then added another two holes, one into each of the two skulls. I approached these at slightly different angles to add a little variation to the finished positioning. For the spikes, I took some 1mm thick plastic card rod and used some plastic glue to fix it into one of the holes. After giving the glue a chance to dry, I clipped the rod to length, leaving about half a centimetre protruding from the backpack. For the second hole, I repeated gluing the rod into place, however this time, I didn't trim it to length. I couldn't be sure how much rod I would need until after I had added the first skull. With the second rod in place, I then added a little plastic glue to the hole in one of the skulls and slid this over the shorter first rod. I pushed the skull down as far as it would go until only a small amount of plastic rod emerged from the top. With that first skull already in place, I had a much better idea of how long the second rod needed to be, so I set about clipping this down to roughly a full centimetre in length. After giving it a chance to dry, I then glued the second skull into the rod, following the same process as before. However, this time I rested the skull much higher up the pole. With both skulls in place, I could add the jawbone to the higher position skull. This was just a case of gluing it into place at a jaunty angle to represent the jaw becoming dislodged as the skull deteriorated. One of the final aspects of this chapter that we were given in the Codex is their endocannibalism. This plays into a more interesting but often overlooked aspect of the Marine's physiology. But it's hard to clearly represent this on the model without literally having him eating the dismembered arm of a fallen battle brother. But to give a slight nod to this trait, I grabbed one of the small reliquies that feature bones from the Intercessor's kit and attached this to the front of the belt. The final step was to add a helmet. I hadn't really explored the dragon aspect of the chapter yet either, but I didn't want anything too over the top, so I decided to make a very slight modification to the regular Primus helmet to give it a slightly more draconic appearance. I grabbed myself some perfect plastic putty, which is great to use, mainly because it's quick drying and can be filed smooth. I take a small amount and pressed it into the vents on the helmet, filling them up. I then used a wet finger to help smooth this out a bit and remove any putty that may have escaped to the other parts of the helmet before putting the head aside to allow it all to dry. Once the putty had dried, I used a combination of my knife and a file to help smooth out the front of the helmet. Removing all the putty I applied except that which had filled the vents. When painted, this area would be completely smooth, giving the helmet a more unique look. All I needed to do then was to glue the helmet to the rest of the model before giving it a suitable paint scheme, which left me with this. And here we have the finished Dragon Spear. I painted him in the standard cyan colour of the chapter, but to help feed into that slightly dark aspect I was trying to create, I added some blood for the blood god spatters across the spear and the left half of the torso. If you're interested in how I achieved the blue, check out my recent livestream where I painted this guy up. Overall, it was a great challenge to tackle a chapter that only had a name, one image, and a small paragraph of background. It's harder in a way because I don't have as much to go on, but it's also a lot more liberating. 
I can choose exactly what I want to go into the model without the worry of getting some obscure piece of lore wrong and then having angry rants in the comment section. So if there are other lesser known chapters you'd like to see me tackle, then do let me know down below and subscribe to be kept up to date with all of my latest conversions. The final thing to say is a massive thank you to all of my supporters. Whether you support me on Patreon, buy me a coffee, or just use my affiliates links, your help is what keeps this channel alive and it's what allows me to build these conversions for you. If you would like to help me out, then you can check out my Buy Me A Coffee page, where you can support me as a one-off or as an ongoing membership, and you can find a link to that below. And so until next time, thanks for watching, and goodbye.